guys, it's Kira and welcome to another video. Before we get into the actual topic of today's video, I just wanted to point out that I'm not entirely sure how I feel about today's choice of hairstyle. I was kind of feeling it because I was like, yeah, let's go for some cute space buns and just go with a new look. But then as I was coming downstairs to film in this room, Jay's mum did point out to me that because of the top that I'm wearing, which is this cute panda, I kind of look like I've imitated the panda's ears. So just to clarify, that wasn't an intentional decision, but it's happening now so we're just gonna have to go with it because this is going on the internet so we might as well just make it a look so without further ado the actual topic of today's video I'm gonna be sharing with you my TBR for the reading rush I'm so excited about this because the reading rush is by far my favorite readathon to take part in I absolutely love it this is my third year participating and I just have such a love for this readathon it was the first readathon I ever took part in three years ago now when I'd pretty much just started booktube and I honestly had such a fun time and it really sort of introduced me to the booktube community which I hadn't really been involved in before and so every year since then I've had such a great time participating and challenging myself to read as much as possible basically. For the last two years, so the only two times I've participated, I have managed to read seven books in seven days and so that is exactly what I'm going to be trying to do again this year and I absolutely love the challenge, especially because everyone else is trying to read a lot as well. It really brings everyone together into this one readathon and it really pushes me to try and read as much as possible. I'm feeling quite lucky because last year I managed to do seven in seven whilst also working a full-time job, which is quite a challenge, whereas this this year we're still in a part of lockdown in the UK which means I've not yet gone back to work so I have a lot more time than I actually normally would and very very luckily I'm actually going back to work the day after the readathon finishes which is so lucky because otherwise I would have definitely struggled to try and fit in seven and seven but as it stands this will be my last week off of work and I'm really excited to spend it doing as much reading as possible. The Reading Rush is of course hosted by Ariel from the channel Ariel Bissett and also Raylene and I will link in the description box down below the announcement video where they both talk about The Reading Rush and also all of the prompts. But I'm honestly so excited to be participating and the readathon is taking place, if you're not aware, from the 20th of July until the 26th. So without further ado, let's get into the prompts and the books I'm planning to read in The Reading Rush. As always, there are seven prompts for this readathon, and like I said, I'm trying to read seven books, but you actually don't have to. You can buddy them up and read as few books as you'd like to. And of course, if you could find one book that matched all of the prompts, which would be a very, very big achievement, then you could just read one book. But I'm going to be trying to read seven books, so I've picked a different book for each of the prompts. So the first prompt is one which I really, really liked. Every year there's a prompt which relates to the colour of book covers, and this year's one was very, very interesting because it was to read a book where the colour of the cover matches the colour of your birthstone. I feel like I got off quite easily with this one because my birthstone doesn't have a particularly unusual colour. There were some people I've seen on Twitter who were saying their birthstone was opal and diamond and of course those are a little bit more unusual in terms of book covers. However, I was born in May which means that my birthstone is emerald so I just needed to find a green book cover which isn't too difficult. I have made an effort this year to only read books that I already own. I didn't want to go out and buy loads of new books for the readathon and I do have a tendency to do that when it comes to readathons and prompts because it is so easy to just see recommendations and think oh yeah I'll just buy that one for the readathon but then before you know it you've acquired like seven new books and you've still got a huge pile of your actual physical TBR still waiting to be read so this year I really tried to just focus on the books I already own so of course even though green isn't a particularly unusual book cover colour I have had a little bit more of a limited selection just because it had to be one which I already own so the one that I ended up going for was Ripley Underground by Patricia Highsmith this one has a very clearly green cover, so it definitely matches this prompt, and I'm really, really excited to read it. This is a sequel to the book, The Talented Mr. Ripley, which is, of course, a really, really popular book and such a great, like, thrillery, murder mystery style book. It's just such a, like, captivating read, and I also am absolutely in love with the film adaptation, and I really, really enjoyed reading this one. Funnily enough, I actually read The Talented Mr. Ripley in the first ever reading rush that I took part in two years ago or 
yeah, would it be two years ago now? The first ever Reading Rush that I took part in. And so it seems really fun to be able to come back and read the sequel in my third Reading Rush. And so I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. I don't know too much about it, to be perfectly honest. However, Jay is a big fan of the full Mr. Ripley series and he's read all of them and thinks this one is really good. So I'm really looking forward to reading it and finding out what happens next. Because like I said, The Talented Mr. Ripley is such a good book. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where Patricia Highsmith went with the series next. So prompt number two is to read a book which starts with the word the, which I was very happy to see because that was quite an easy prompt to meet. Loads of books start with the word the, so I didn't have to worry about finding one on my shelves. In fact, the actual struggle for this one was narrowing it down to which one I actually wanted to read because I had so many books that could have been used for this prompt, but the one that I ended up going for was The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. I am very, very excited to read this one because I absolutely love CJ Tudor's writing style. I read one of her other books back at the very end of last year and it was called The Taking of Annie Thorne and it was such an incredible read. It was one of those books that was just completely unput downable. It had a really, really interesting narrative style in the sense that there was a present day narrative and then a past narrative that was gradually filling you in about all of the events that were taking place in the present day and that just made it to be such a compelling read and so for that reason I'm really excited to read this one and I've been wanting to read more of her books ever since I read that one but just haven't gotten around to it so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to finally tick off another one of her books from my TBR and I'm sure it will be absolutely incredible. So next up we have prompt number three and this was the one that I really really struggled with. I feel like in every readathon there's always one prompt that you just can't figure out and that you just really struggle to choose a book for and that was to read a book which has inspired a movie that you've already seen. Now the reason I struggled with this one is because like a lot of readers I tend to read the book first and then see the film so it's a little bit harder to do it in the opposite direction and it was also just hard to figure out what to search for because there are absolutely loads of films are based on books, some are direct book to movie adaptations and other ones are slightly looser adaptations that have just taken inspiration from books. However, when you don't know that it's based on a book, it's really hard to figure out what is actually based on a book, what's a book to movie adaptation and all of that stuff. So I ended up just like completely scrambling my mind over this one and I probably made it a little bit trickier than it needed to be. But eventually I decided to go for The Body by Stephen King, which is a short story in this different seasons book. And the movie which I've already seen is Stand By Me, which was based on The Body. I absolutely love Stand By Me. It is such a like nostalgic film. It's set in the 80s or it was filmed in the 80s. I don't actually know when it was set and it just is such a like brilliant film I really really like it it's one of my favorite Stephen King adaptations and I've been wanting to read the book version for absolutely ages now so this seems like a perfect opportunity and being that it's a short story it's perfect for a week where I'm trying to read seven books in seven days Prompt number four is also a little bit complicated and that is to read the first book that you touch so that's obviously a slightly strange prompt. However, Ariel and Raylene did say that you could interpret this one however you wanted to. So you could literally just go to your shelves, close your eyes and touch a book and that could be the book that you're gonna read. Or you could pick a selection of books and pick from that one. So the way that I've gone about it is I've chosen this pile of books, which are all books from my physical TBR. Most of them I actually was gifted for my birthday. Ah, and... <laughs> Essentially, I have 10 books here. So we have The One That Got Away by Simon Wood, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, Cherry by Nico Walker, With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, Paperweight by Meg Haston, Hot Milk by Deborah Levy, Vicious by V.E. Schwab, and Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So these are all books which I cannot seem to even hold. Um, these are all books which are, of course, on my physical TBR. I've picked out the books which are all of a relatively similar length because I know that I didn't want to pick like a huge hardback or like a Game of Thrones book. So I've narrowed it down to this and then essentially I am going to hold the books here, close my eyes and just do a little bit of a, a thing and then see which book we've picked. So without further ado, Okay, I've got a book. Ooh, okay. Book 
to have a lunch. Okay. The book I've gone for is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, which I am really excited about. I was gifted this one by my friend Grace, who I often do book swaps with, and she sent me this one a little while ago, and I'm really, really looking forward to reading it. It's a murder mystery, I think, that's set in a hunting cabin, and there's like a group of old friends, and then I think one of them dies, and it's all about like a whodunit type thing. So it sounds very, very compelling. So I'm really, really excited. I'm glad that I picked this one. Although to be perfectly honest, I would have been happy with any of those books because they all sound really interesting. And I'm hoping to read all of them at some point soon, but not all of them in the next like seven days, I guess. <laughs> So prompt number five is to read a book completely outside of your house. Again, there are loads of different ways you could interpret this one. You could listen to an audiobook whilst driving and just listen to it right throughout the week on all of the drives that you do. You could take a book into the garden and read in the garden. You could take it to the park. You could end up just holding the book outside of the window and staying yourself inside, but the book is completely outside of the house. And for me, I'm actually gonna be reading a book whilst camping. Like I said, the readathon is taking place from Monday the 20th until Sunday the 26th, and on the Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, I'm going camping, and I will definitely be bringing books with me and hopefully finishing at least one whilst I'm out of the house. And of course, I'll be completely away from the house and in a tent, so whichever book I read whilst camping will definitely match this prompt. Now this is one of those prompts where you don't have to read a new book, you could of course just pick one of the books from the other prompts and read it completely out of the house and use that to take off two prompts, but because I'm trying to read seven books, I have picked a new book and that book is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, which I am so excited about. This was actually a very recent purchase for me, I didn't buy it with the intention of reading it for the reading rush, I just bought it because it looked completely irresistible, but now I'm so excited to read it so I'm super glad there's a very open prompt like this one so that I can read this book. I picked this one up on a very recent trip to the bookshop with Em and she pointed out this book to me and said that she'd seen a fair few people on Bookstagram saying that this was a very similar book to Normal People by Sally Rooney, which I'm sure many of you are aware is one of my all-time favourite books and definitely my favourite book of 2020 so far, along with Conversations with Friends also by Sally Rooney. And so when I heard that this book was Normal People-esque, I just couldn't resist it. It's also written by an Irish author and so I just think Irish authors are clearly doing amazing things and doing great things in the world of like contemporary literary fiction which is one of my favorite genres and so I was so excited to read this one and then immediately after picking it up there is a quote on the back from the Irish Times which says that it is likely to fill the Sally Rooney shaped hole in many readers lives which I desperately need because there is a big Sally Rooney hole in my life at the moment and I just love her writing style, so I'm really excited to read this one and see what it's all about. And I feel like it will be a great accompaniment to my camping trip. So I'll be taking this one with me, packing it along with all the rest of my camping stuff and reading it from the tent or from near the tent. But regardless, it will be outside of the house. So prompt number six is to read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of, which was really, really handy for me because very, very recently I've had the self-realization that I am a thriller lover who has hardly read any thrillers. By which I mean, I feel like thrillers are my ideal genre. I love psychological stuff. I love reading about crime. I love true crime. And so thrillers seem like the ideal genre for me. And I feel like I love them whenever I read them. However, when I've actually looked at my shelves at my Goodreads and just thought about what books I've actually read, it turns out that I've hardly read any thrillers at all. And so that is absolutely something I want to change and this prompt seems like the perfect opportunity to try and read some more thrillers. I actually will be reading a couple of thrillers this week because The Chalkman, which I'm reading for the book that starts with the, is also a thriller but I thought it would be a great opportunity to throw another thriller in there and just try and start taking more off my TBR. Because at the moment I don't really think I can call myself a thriller lover because I just haven't read enough of them but I really really want to. So the thriller I've ended up going for is The Secret She Keeps by Michael Robotham. This is an Australian psychological thriller which sounds really interesting. I don't know a huge amount about it because I think with thrillers it's better to not know loads going in but I do know it's about two women and some very dark secrets that they're both keeping. And I'm hoping that it might be a dual perspective seeing as it is focusing on two women because I absolutely love dual narrative styles but regardless it does sound really interesting. 
I was inspired to pick this one up because I saw a really, really small snippet of the TV adaptation of this series on the BBC a couple of weeks ago. And I only watched a tiny bit because I realized it looked really interesting and I didn't want to be spoiled as soon as I found out that it was based on a book. So I watched a tiny bit of the first episode and then decided to wait get the book, read the book, and then watch the TV adaptation. So I'm really, really excited to get started on it this week. And I'm really looking forward to it because it sounds really, really interesting. And I've actually just looked inside and it is a dual perspective book. So that is a winner. So I'm really excited to finally start reading some more thrillers with this one. So the seventh and final prompt for the reading rush this year is to read a book which is set on a continent different from the one where you live. So I of course live in the UK so the continent I'm in is Europe so I just needed to pick a book which was set anywhere other than Europe which to be perfectly honest was not that difficult. I have loads of books which are set in all kinds of different locations but I have a lot of books that are set in North America particularly so I ended up picking one of those books and the one that I went for I'm really excited to read and that is Wild by Cheryl Strayed. Now like I said I had plenty of choice for this prompt because I have loads of books that are set outside of Europe and in actual fact it would have probably been a little bit harder to find a book that was set in Europe. Not impossible but I feel like a lot of the books on my shelves are American based and so it was really easy to find a book which matched this prompt. So the reason I decided to go for this one in particular was because it wasn't just set in North America, it's a book where the location is a really really key part of the story. This is a book which is all about a woman's sort of journey and self growth as she walks the Pacific Crest Trail, which is a huge trail that goes up the west coast of America. And so the location is a really, really key part of the story and it's not just ambiently taking place in America, it really does make use of the location. And so I thought this would be a perfect one for this prompt just because it's not only set in a different place than where I live and on a different continent, but also the specific location of this book is really, really important to the story. And so it just seemed like a perfect choice for this prompt. So there we have it, seven books for seven prompts and hopefully seven books in seven days. I really, really hope that I managed to read these books throughout the reading rush because I just wanna keep my seven in seven streak going for as long as possible. But I've picked some great books, I think, so I don't think I should struggle too much because they all sound really, really interesting. So those are, of course, all of the books I'm planning to read during the reading rush. I'm gonna be vlogging throughout the whole thing, so I will, of course, be sharing all of my thoughts throughout the readathon and I cannot wait to get started. If you're taking part in the reading rush and you've uploaded a TBR, definitely let me know in a comment down below because I'd love to go and check it out and see what you're going to be reading. And also let me know in your comment which book you're most excited to read during the reading rush. I think my most anticipated read would have to be um, Exciting Times because it's got exciting in the title and I'm certainly excited to read it. But mostly I just want to see if it is as good as Sally Rooney and if it will fill that Sally Rooney shaped hole because I really need that. So this is my definitely most anticipated read for the reading rush, but I'd love to know what yours is as well. So there we have it. Those are all of the books I'm planning to read during the reading rush. I'm really, really excited to get started and I can't wait to share all of my thoughts in my vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.